So how did the uh, Central Europeans, I'm thinking particularly of von Mises, Hayek, yes. Schumpeter, right. who had been victims, at least some of them, uh, personally quite victimized by hyperinflation. Absolutely. How did they re relate to this reflationary well, impulse? Well, this is really interesting because when Joseph Schumpeter was the, uh, a fi the finance minister during, you know, right, af right after World War I, you know, faced with the impossible task of trying to, f you know, feed the Austrian people with a government that was bankrupt. He was, like Keynes, really arguing against the people who felt that, uh, that economic viability depended on territory or population and said, no, 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 it's really, it's not about what you have, it's about what, how well you manage what you have. So Keynes and Schumpeter were allies in World War I. Now, by the time the Great Depression rolled around, uh, 10 years later, uh, and Keynes and Fisher were, you know, known as the, um, you know, they were the two big monetary reformers or in the, in the eyes of their critics, the inflationists. By then, Schumpeter was actually writing a book on monetary economics and a monetary theory of the business cycle. When Keynes's um, you just saw money was the uh, money. 1930s uh, right came out, he abandoned his own work. Okay, which does not suggest that he was on the verge of producing a you know a serious challenge to Fisher and Keynes. And Hayek, who is much younger, um, uh, and you know, also you know, greatly admire Keynes for having written uh, the economic consequences of the peace and sticking up for the Austrians, was making his early career as a critic of Fisher and, and Keynes, mm -hmm. a critic of the idea that that government could. Um, you know, could be trusted in some level. You know, Lionel Robbins brought him to LSE yes. to okay. uh, take so on Keynes. So Hayek is brought to uh, is brought to England to be the the sort of the the theoretical ballast for the people who distrusted Keynes, who who wanted to provide a new rationale for the old policy of in a in an economic slump what you you know when business has lost confidence what you do to regain confidence is to reiterate your uh, your commitment to the gold standard to hard money and you balance your budget in order to restore confidence and so Hayek comes in and you know Keynes is saying we need monetary expansion we need monetary expansion and um, and Hayek comes in and says, uh, no, you'll do more harm than good. He, he, his theory of, of recessions was not that there was some disturbance that caused a, monet, you know, a money drought that you could then fix by injecting more money into the economy, but rather that a depression was a, the consequence of the boom interest rates were too low, so you had a big boom, and all kinds of imbalances built up, and the slump was the necessary purge, okay? And you uh, uh, really, the best thing to do, the shortest way back to recovery and full employment was to let nature take its course. Now. He, you know, he said that in 1931, and it was very clear that that did not lead to recovery. In fact, that led to, you know, a, a depression that was much worse. And, of course, the minute that FDR came in, and it wasn't that, you know, it wasn't fiscal, you know, it wasn't fiscal policy that did it. He, he just, you know, got the U.S. off gold. The U.S. economy shot up. I think that you know industrial production rose like 60% in the first year. 
you know, from a very low base. But the point is, it was, and at that point, the, the Hayek and Schumpeter had a similar argument. The evidence went against them. Hayek basically gave up uh, the, his attempt to produce a theoretical challenge to uh, Keynes and, and Fisher, and he didn't do it because he had a successful theory. He did it because he, because he didn't. He didn't have a theory that, you know, that could account for the facts. And he then left, uh, and like many failures, it led him to what his, you know, his really great contribution, which was on the role of the price system and information economics and why, why no centrally planned economy could deliver the way that the decentralized free market economy could. It just surprises me that people now are citing Hayek because his, you know, his theory didn't work then. And, and the other thing is that by the time he wrote The Road to Serfdom, which is a great book, uh, and came to the U.S., uh, that was 1945, he had his book tour. And he was, you know, embraced by the Republicans and the Reader's Digest, which was fairly conservative. The, Bretton Woods Treaty was up for a vote, and all these bankers and Republicans who opposed the idea of, of, um, of you know, international cooperation to ensure the financial viability of the post-war recovery, make, make the post-war recovery possible, um, of course, um, were expected Hayek to to side with them. To side with them. And he turned around and supported Bretton Woods. Okay. And in fact, really from throughout the war, he and, and you know, he was basically supporting what, you know, what, what Keynes's policy recommendations, uh, which of course were anti-inflationary and. Yes. But the point is that he got out of the business of macroeconomics um, and, you know, went on to do something that... It was another profound contribution. That was, the, that was his profound contribution, yeah. So he was a supporter of, you know, the sort of mini, uh, mi national minimum. He um, said in repeated interviews on his book tour that fighting extreme unemployment was the responsibility of the government. Sounds like Hayek's the kind of guy that needs to be protected from his disciples. Yes, and you know, it's like the same is true of Keynes. Of course, Keynes fought, you know, was constantly fighting with his disciples and, and kind of, he didn't, he didn't need that kind of, well, he fought with his disciples. He thought, he thought the American Keynesians were far too soft on inflation. Which Hayek agreed with. Which Hayek agreed <laughs> with. So it comes full circle. Yeah.